All right, my friends. We have been learning about so many different myths. In our myths, we talked about how there are often mythical creatures like Cerberus or the Minotaur. A lot of Greek myths include Greek gods or goddesses. And we read one earlier this week that didn't include any gods or goddesses, but included a very heroic character named Theseus. In today's Read Aloud, we're going to learn about another Greek hero named Heracles. You might know Heracles better by his Roman name, Hercules. As we're reading about Hercules today and in our next lesson, be thinking about what he does that is so wonderful or heroic and see if we can figure out what is trying to be explained or what lessons we can learn from Hercules' story. All right, friends, before we start reading, I'm going to go over our, our vocabulary words that we'll see. Commotion. A commotion is a noisy confusion or fuss. There was quite a commotion on the playground at recess as the students ran around having fun. Dreadful. If something is dreadful, it is terrible or extremely unpleasant. This weather is dreadful for driving, Peter exclaimed as the heavy snow fell on the windshield. Aimlessly. If you do something aimlessly, you do it without a specific purpose or destination. Fred and his brother walked around their neighborhood aimlessly. An antonym for aim, aimlessly, or an opposite, is purposefully. I'm going to read several different scenarios to you. If what I describe is someone doing something aimlessly, say aimless or aimlessly. If what I describe is someone doing something with a specific purpose or destination, say purposefully. All right, doodling all over a piece of paper without a plan for what it should look like. That is being done aimlessly. Writing a letter to a friend. That is being done purposely. We have a specific purpose for writing a letter. What about walking to school? If you're walking to school, you have a specific de destination in mind, so that is being done purposely. What about just wandering around outside? If you're just wandering around, there is no specific destination, so you are wandering aimlessly. It's Hercules, a boy shouted. His father stopped in the middle of plowing their field and ran to get his son. The boy's mother, terrified at the sight of the large man, stopped her work in the field and dashed to join the rest of the family. They all rushed into their farmhouse and slammed the door. Based on how this family reacted to Hercules, do you think he's very well liked? The huge muscular man who had caused all of this commotion sighed and continued walking past the farm in long, powerful strides. He was used to this sort of thing, although he remembered a time when his appearance would have been a cause for joyous celebration. The man was Hercules, mightiest of heroes and son of Zeus. Who is Zeus again? As a baby, he once subdued two snakes that someone put in his crib. Such was his strength. He could carve a new, ch a new channel in the ground to create the direction of a river, or wrestle and defeat fierce beasts or monsters to save people in trouble. Does it sound like Hercules used his strength to help people or to hurt people? Do his actions sound heroic? 
I think he sounds like a pretty good hero. So why do you think people are afraid of him now? There was only one thing Hercules could not defeat. Himself. That was why everyone now feared him. You see, Hercules had a temper as powerful as his muscles. When he became angry, he would strike out against whatever or whomever had angered him. Then he would feel terrible, thinking, I told myself I would not let that happen again. But it was always too late for whomever he had hurt. At last, the other Greeks told Hercules, You have done many great things for us, but now you are a threat to our safety. You may no longer live among us. Furthermore, anyone sheltering you feeding you, or even speaking with you, will also be forced out from among us. How do you think you would feel if you were Hercules and heard, heard this from the Greeks that you had so long protected? Do the Greeks think of Her Hercules as a hero now? So Hercules, once the most beloved and admired person in the land, was forced to wander, friendless and alone. After a while, he no longer cared about his appearance. His hair and beard grew shaggy. His clothing became torn. If no one else cared, why should he? Food was not a problem, for he was a great hunter, but he no longer took pleasure in a hearty meal. He ate just to survive. For three long years, Hercules, who had the strength and courage of a lion, wandered aimlessly. If he stumbled into a place where some dreadful danger threatened the people, he would take care of the problem on his own, although no one had asked him to do so or thanked him at the end. Then he would continue on his way. So. Is Hercules still acting like a hero, even though the Greeks don't think of him as one? Why do you think he's doing that? One day, as he sat on a hillside with his back against a tree trunk, Hercules noticed a line of horsemen riding into sight. Their road passed by the foot of his hill, so they came closer. Then, to Hercules' shock, the leader held up his hand to halt the others, and, turning his horse, started alone up the hill straight toward Hercules. As the rider came closer and closer, Hercules rose to his feet in surprise and alarm. He thought, doesn't he know what will happen to him if he approaches me? The huge man began to wave his arms and shout, Go back! Go back! Still, the horseman rode straight toward him. Now Hercules could see the rider's face, and his concern became even greater. For the horseman was another great Grecian hero, Theseus, king of Athens. The two men had become loyal friends ever since Hercules had rescued Theseus from the underworld. But that's a story for another time. Now, as Theseus continued toward him, Hercules again shouted, Go back! But Theseus rode straight up to Hercules, dismounted, and then took Hercules' huge hand between his own. I have been looking for you, my friend, Theseus said. And despite everything, in that moment, Hercules felt a faint ray of hope. Theseus went on, I know you did not do these dreadful things on purpose. Come with me to Athens, where the people care more for true justice. By helping Hercules, Theseus was risking his crown and his entire way of life. Fortunately, the Athenians so completely trusted his wisdom and honor that they then welcomed Hercules among them. Still, the huge man felt sad for what he had done. Theseus told him, you will never be free of the past until you have worked away your guilt and mastered your temper and your great strength. 
Go ask Apollo, the god of wisdom and truth, how to do these things. And remember always, you have a friend who believes in you. Thank you, replied Hercules. You have taught me that there are more kinds of courage than I ever knew. One must be brave to face a monster, but braver still to do what is right when all are against you. So Hercules set out once more, never guessing that the, his most remarkable adventures and his greatest glory still lay before him. According to our story today, who was Hercules the son of? Right, he was the son of Zeus, the most powerful, and the king of all gods and goddesses. What kinds of good de deeds does Hercules perform with his great strength? What sorts of things does he do for people? He carves new paths for rivers, defeats monsters, and saves people that are in tricky situations. Why did the Greeks, so these are wonderful things that he did for the Greek people, why did they stop thinking of him as a hero? Why did they stop thinking of Hercules as a hero? Hercules had a dreadful temper, which means that he got angry very easily and very quickly which made him not so well liked among the Greek people. Why did Theseus decide to help Hercules? Why did he want to help him? Theseus wanted to help him because he was a true friend to Hercules and believed in justice. Do you think that he sounds like a good friend helping him even after everything the other people were saying about him? I think so. Who does Theseus tell Hercules to go talk to? What advice does he give him? Who does he tell Hercules to talk to, to to free himself of his past? Right. Theseus tells Hercules to talk to Apollo, the god of wisdom. Do you think that's pretty good advice? Do you think Apollo will be able to help Hercules? We will find out in our next read aloud. For now, I want you to open up the PDF that's attached to this assignment and open it in Cami. I will jump on my computer to show you what you need to do on that assignment. Okay, our assignment today has two different parts. For our first part, we're going to be doing another journal entry about Hercules. In this journal entry, I want you to tell me a little bit about him, and I also want you to tell me if you think he was a hero or not, and why. Was Hercules a hero, and why? Make sure that journal entry has two to three sentences. And as always, you may illustrate your entry if you would like to. When you are done with that, go ahead and pause this video until you're finished with that first part, and then scroll down to the second, and I'll tell you what we're doing there. All right, welcome back, friends. We have a planning guide on this page. We've used planning guides like this when we are writing things. Remember, the first step in the writing process is to plan. We have to have a plan for what we're writing before we can draft it. Today, we are going to start working on a Greek myth. We've read a lot of Greek myths now. Now, I want you to come up with your own Greek myth. As you're planning your Greek myth, the characters that you'll want to think about, remember in Greek myths, we have lots of gods and goddesses, mythical creatures, regular people, and heroes. Our setting, is because it is a Greek myth, 
our setting will probably be somewhere in ancient Greece, or maybe in Mount Olympus, or even the underworld where Hades lives. And our plot is what happens in a story. Usually a story has some kind of problem that is solved. Our story can usually be split into a beginning section, a middle section, and an end. Our beginning will introduce us to our characters and setting and our problem. Our middle will be about how our characters respond to that problem and how they try to solve it. And our end tells what happened after their attempts to solve the problem. Were they successful? Did it work? Did they get a happy ending? Remember, Greek myths also usually explain something in nature, like the changing seasons, how animals came to be, and they often teach some kind of moral lesson, such as the lesson that we learned in Arachne the Weaver about not being too boastful and not bragging too much. Included in this assignment, I am going to add a picture of a little chart that breaks down the character setting and plot for you and tells you what they look like in some of the Greek myths that we read. That will be attached as a separate PDF in the assignment and you can look back at that to help you get ideas and to help you remember what each of these sections mean. You'll also need a title for your myth. A lot of the myths that we have read so far, the title is the name of the or names of the main character or characters. That could be a good title for your myth, but it doesn't have to be. All right, my friends, when you are finished filling out your planning guide, this one you will need to keep. We will come back and use this to draft our myths in our next lesson. Before you turn this one in, make sure that you either take a picture of what you have typed, that you print what you have typed, or write it down on a physical piece of paper. Save this somehow so that you can use it in our next lesson. After you have saved this somehow, whether you took a picture or printed it or saved it, whatever you do to keep it, then you may turn it in.